Hello, brothers and sisters. I don't know if you recall this. This is when Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston went to visit the African Hebrews of Jerusalem, the African-American black people who, recognizing their identity, had returned to Israel, to Israel, and suffered all the racist persecution there because of the wonderful leadership of this man right here, Ben Ami, Ben Ami Carter, but Ben Ami, and here's a picture of happier days. So we just say to the people, stop blaming Bobby and blame Babylon, because here these people was trying to get out the matrix, and in a sense they were somewhat successful. However, the media would not allow that to be so. And they tried to demonize, and even now they're trying to blame Bobby, although he's hundreds of miles away, had nothing to do with that. Both of them were trying to get back into the matrix and go on with their so-called um, careers and make more so-called money or fulfill their obligations. You see, they had obligations. They were commodities. And you've got to remember that. You've got to remember that the fact that they are commodities, let's get this picture right here, that they are commodities for, for the system and under contract and are money makers. Right here, here's a picture with um, Ariel Sharon. We haven't heard too much with Ariel Sharon. There's Whitney Houston. They were like ambassadors for black people. And they're now, you know, this is 2003. Very significant, but of course, most most lost sheep, most lost Negroes really could not really understand and still don't understand the significance of this. But there's a lot of hate against Bobby Brown. There's a whole lot of hate because he's a black man. Why they hate Bobby Brown? Because he's a black man. You know what I mean? And, and, and a black man that even with his faults still keeps it real. And she loved this man. And this man was perhaps the best thing for her. Yes, they had problems, so forth and so on. They had ups and downs, you know, as any relationship does. Let's be mature. Let's be real. But they would not respect the fact that she loved this black man who was certain shades darker than her. If, if, you, if you understand slick Willie Lynchism, how to make a slave, this is one of the main reasons why most black folks, and in particular, some of the black women even have this, this black woman good, man bad sort of attitude. And even now, with this tragedy, they're still trying to demonize Bobby Brown and say, well, the reason why she's dead is because of this black man. It, it, it's part of the bigger picture of white supremacy. It's part of the bigger picture of what we're dealing with here that, unfortunately, is too far above the head of most so-called um, most so-called Negroes, but we really need to thank this brother right here, you know Bobby Brown, Yovas, who went to visit this community, this African Hebrew community back in 2000 and um, 2003, and immediately they became headlines once again, but mainly about every little thing, and even made up a lot of stories. They made up a lot of stories in order to divide and conquer, because when they saw this, it sent shockwaves. This right here sent shockwaves. First of all, you had a African-American Jews or, or Hebrew Israelites who returned, just like many so-called con converted Jews, European Jews, to what they regard and what truly is their roots. And now you have some of the biggest stars some of the biggest celebrities actually verifying this, going forward, visiting the community, visiting the state of Israel, visiting a prosperous and a holistic community of black folks. And here you see Whitney putting up, you know, putting up that so-called black power fist or, or that fist like, yeah. And, and, and look at all the pictures during this time. If you watch the pictures during this particular time, you can see how, you know, how happy, how genuinely happy she was and how happy they were for that visit because they had found 
we have found Zion due to this brother right here, the effort of this brother and a lot of other good brothers, a lot of other good brothers and sisters as well, a lot of other good brothers and sisters. So we thought we'd just bring this to you once again and maybe put this under a title, Stop Blaming, Stop Blaming Bobby, you understand, and start to blame Bobby Lon. You understand? Blame Babylon, blame Babylon. Even Shaka Khan had to come out there and ask and question what sort of, you know, what sort of human being would try to profit off of the tragedy. And that's where, 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 where you look for who done it. In a who done it mystery, you look for, well, who, who profits from this? Who, who stands the most to gain? From this sort of a from this sort of a tragedy, well, it's very obvious the music industry, ones like Clive Davis and others, you know, who right after it was announced that she was dead, you understand, sought to profit off of that. You understand, sought sought to make that part of the show instead of having time to, you know, have give the people time to mourn, but instead it was to sing. It's like that psalm that says, "By the rivers of Babylon." But they had made it out for a time. They were able to sneak away from the matrix for a time. They were able to find Zion for a time. Probably the biggest mistake is that they didn't stay in Zion, you know, that they came back or they were drawn back to the West for whatever reason, you know, and they were separated. They were divided and conquered, you know, and even right now. We know Bobby had nothing to do with this, but yet they're blaming Bobby for it instead of looking at the evidence that's in plain sight, brothers and sisters. Stop blaming Bobby and blame Babylon. These black people, though they were unsuccessful fully, they still have shown the way. So shalom, I and I say, to our brothers and sisters. Rastafari. <laughs>